point we're going to publish uh, Chick-fil-A to work inside two. that spot, it had been four minutes and 33 seconds, correct? Correct. Okay.
inside three.
AAA work inside the door. Now, was that the first time out of the score that you actually got, you didn't catch the light? Yes, it is. gave you, uh, told you he went to uh, where at lunch, for lunch? Publix. Okay. I'm going to show you, I'm not going to ask you to step down, the jury's seen it a few times. State's Exhibit 230, can you see that? Okay. Okay. And so if you're leaving Treehouse, you got picked up at Treehouse and comes back to uh, Publix, Correct. what does he have to pass uh, twice? The chick there and on the way back. The chick lay where he had breakfast with his son? That's correct. Now we talked about the um, the route he took, or uh, the route he would have taken from Treehouse to uh, Acres Mill, where his car came to a stop, and where his child was pulled out of the car, uh, the defendant's child. Um, when did you make these videos? Do you remember uh, what uh, gen what day of the week it would have been? It would have been on Wednesday. Okay. And just generally, what time were you making? Were you uh, driving it? So with that area. Um, when you drove that area from Treehouse to Acres Mill, uh, would it have been different than later in the day? Yeah. Not saying how it would have been different, but would it have been different than, say, 4, 4, 15, 4, 30? Speculation. I'll ask it. Are you familiar with traffic patterns in that area? Okay, would it have been the, bless you, 
with the traffic that had been different back in the afternoon than it was uh, when you did it this morning. I think I laid the foundation. You notice the traffic pattern. I'm allowed. You That's correct. It. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and publish that video now. Work in subway.
Detective, the stop time on that is 4 4. Correct. Detective, turn your attention now to talk a little bit about um, the, the routine as far as taking uh, Cooper to daycare and things like that. Now, in this case, did you guys actually receive uh, records from Little Apron Academy and things like that as far as badge access into and out of Little Apron and some tracking sheets to kind of go by and uh, corroborate or match up what had happened and who dropped off when? We did. Okay, in the defendant's statement, uh, I believe he started off by saying he usually did, but then then said it, backed off that immediately and said, well, it's kind of a toss up. Correct. Okay. Did you look at the badge access records um, from, that were provided from May 5th to June 17th of 2014? I have. Okay, and in the 24 days that we have records of um, being able to determine who dropped Cooper off, the mother or the father, uh, how many times did the defendant drop Cooper off in the morning between those days? So between uh, May 1st, and June 17th, dad dropped off 19 times. Okay. And how many times, <coughs> excuse me, did the mother drop off? Well, dad dropped off five times. So the father dropped off almost 80% of the time. Correct. Now, <clears throat> in June specifically, uh, do you remember what the breakdown was? Yeah, dad dropped off. He went um, to school nine times in June, Cooper did. Uh, the defendant dropped him off six times. Leanna dropped off three times. Now, did you obtain, were you able to actually obtain video as well of Cooper being brought into Little Apron uh, for the month of June on those different days? I did. Okay. And <coughs> you were able to see who brought him in and what dates and kind of how Cooper was on those days. That's correct. Okay. Um, how many occasions in the videos did you see uh, Leanna Paris bringing Cooper in? Um, Leanna brought him in a total of three times. Okay. And were those times earlier than when defendant brings him in? Yes. Okay. And was Cooper awake on all of those occasions? Yes. Now, when the defendant brings him in on those six times, how many times is he asleep and how many times is he awake? He's asleep four times and awake twice. Now, on the dates where he is uh, asleep, are those times where he brings him in between 8.30, 8.45-ish? That is correct. And the two occasions um, that he comes in awake, were any of those times later than usual, say around 9 o'clock? Yes. Okay, and what day was that, if you remember? <clears throat> it was one of the last times, but I don't have it in front of me. Uh, have you seen the videos and would it refresh your memory to watch the video to see what day it was that he actually uh, brought Cooper in uh, closer to 9 o'clock and Cooper was awake? That's correct. was already been admitted as state's exhibit 312 slash drive number three supplied by Greg Sanders. closer. Detective Sutter, have you reviewed that? What day was it, uh, close to 9 o'clock, uh, later than usual, that he actually brought Cooper in? Yeah, it's going to be June 17th, 
And did you also, in the course of your investigation, we talked a lot about you, you interviewed other witnesses and things like that. Uh, did you speak with witnesses who talked about how Cooper would behave after he came from Chick-fil-A and had breakfast and had stopped there? We did. Okay. <coughs> and specifically, um, the defendant in his interview, um, how did he describe Cooper, how he was behaving that morning on the, on the 18th? On the 18th, he stated that Cooper had slept in that morning. Okay. And so he had woken up early and then actually slept in later than usual? That is correct. Okay. And so after that, did he say how he was acting at Chick-fil-A? He was wide awake at Chick-fil-A. Okay. And did he discuss Cooper actually talking to him as he was getting him into the car? As he puts him in the car and he goes through the details of them giving a kiss, um, he stated that Cooper said school. And was that in the conversation where the defendant's talking to Leanna? He says that Cooper said school back to him before That's he That's correct. Okay, I'm going to turn your attention now to um, picking up Cooper. Um, <coughs> generally, did you go back and look at the records uh, regarding uh, the defendant's statement about there was a toss up about who would pick him up, pick Cooper up in the afternoon? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and generally, in the same record from May 5th to June 17th, when Cooper was actually in school, um, what are the number of times that uh, the mother picked uh, Cooper up? Um, Leanna picked him up 15 times. Okay. And the father, defendant, picked him up how many times? Defendant picked him up 10 times. Okay. And there's, there's one number off from the time he picks up and drops off. Was there a time where you weren't able to tell uh, one day who dropped off and uh, on that day but could tell who picked up? That's correct. There's one day where he does come into the school. Um, there's no badge in or badge out report, um, so we can't verify exactly who dropped him off that day in May. And that was that a week where the defendant every other time that week, morning and afternoon, was drop off and pick up? Correct. But for sake of counting, we did not count that as a drop off for the defendant. That's correct. Um, regarding the, the defendant stopping at Chick fil A, did he tell you in his interview how many times that happened? They said it like approximately, approximately two to three times. And was this the first time he had done so in June? We believe so. Did the defendant describe to you about whether this was something important to him or a big deal to him that sticks out in his mind taking his son to Chick-fil-A? Yeah, it would be his daddy son breakfast. <clears throat> now we talked a little about as far as the timeline and things like that. Um, were you able to get an exact, first of all, do you know exactly where the defendant had parked in Chick-fil-A on June 18th? No, there's no video of the Chick-fil-A parking lot that we were able to um, obtain. Okay. So you have no idea where he parked or any video of him walking out and putting Cooper in the car seat? Correct. Okay. Um, did you, in any of the videos that you were able to look at, did you find any videos of the defendant taking uh, Cooper to a car and putting him in the car seat as an approximation of how long it would take him uh, to, to actually get Cooper out to the car and put him into a car seat? Yes, we did. Okay. I'm going to turn your attention to... Uh, I think the same exhibit I have in the flash drive. Uh, would that be June 2nd? June 2nd, that is correct. Got my cursor up here. Uh, is it appearing out of the right? Is that um, who you recognize as the defendant and Cooper leaving at that point, walking out to the car? Yep, up in the left. Okay. And is that a short walk to where is that his car where the cursor is right now? That's correct. Okay. So 456, 56, we can start back.
458.13, he closes the door. Is that correct? That's correct. So it took him just about a minute and 17 seconds to walk that short distance, get him strapped in and close the door. That's correct. Now, looking at the car seat he would have been in, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the car seat and changing the car seat. Um, in this day, um, do we know for sure which car seat he was in? Yes. Okay, and which car seat would it have been based upon when he went back to the rear facing? On that date, he's going to be in... On June 2nd. On June 2nd, he's going to be in the rear facing car seat. Okay, which day was it that he actually uh, switched back to the rear facing? Okay, June 4th is okay. about when we believe, and this is just for text messages, we believe he went back to the rear facing. So I was wrong. This is going to be more likely a front forward facing car seat. Now, do you know exactly which day it is that they actually switched? We're not sure, and it could be the rear facing, but due to the text messages and with him putting swapping out car seats and that, we believe that this will be a forward facing. The fourth, it's around when Leanna goes to Alabama, so that's going to be around the time where he got the rear facing car seat back. Well, let's talk about the rear-facing car seat a little bit then. Um, what type of car seat was this? It was a Kiko 3. And <coughs> in looking at the car seat, have you read the regulations about it and things like that? I have. Okay. Um, was he the appropriate weight for this car seat? Yes. Objection foundation. Judge, you've reviewed the car seat and actually seen the instructions on it. Pulled them up and reviewed them. I'll look at the rear side. What does it say on that? It's a personal knowledge from actually reviewing the actual car seat instructions. It's not that it, it I'm, I'm not trying to enter what is something that, uh, whether it was truthful that the manufacturer said that, what I'm saying is the effect on the hearer, whether the defendant would have been aware what their recommendation was uh, if he read the instructions like he said he did to Detective Scott. Um, what was the height requirement uh, or maximum height for a child uh, in that car seat? Maximum height is 30 inches. Okay. And at Cooper's death, uh, how tall was he? 33 inches. Okay. So he was three inches too big for that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Probably. Okay. Probably. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Detective, regarding the rear-facing car seat, I know we, we talked a little bit about the defendant told you it had been about six weeks earlier, and he talked about how you may have been able to develop uh, when the, the car seats would have been switched. Correct. Okay. Now, looking back, and this, and we'll talk more about this in a little while, um, when you got the, um, <coughs> well, first of all, were you able to recover text messages between the defendant and Leanna, at least going up to a certain day in May? From one of her computers. Yes. And that was to were they, I guess, a backup? We believe so. Okay. And were you able to get all the text messages up to June eighteenth or just to some date in May from that standpoint? Just some date in May. Okay. Uh, later were you able to, to, to obtain all the text messages or as many as you can get from the defendant's phone uh, from the time he started using it at least some point up until the date of June eighteenth. Correct. Okay. Going back to uh, the, the car scene, um, did you have information in the case that they had uh, researched it and they were looking for forward-facing car seats and things like that? Yes. Okay. Uh, turn your attention to May 12th uh, of 2014. Was there a, a text conversation with the defendant discussed uh, having to actually put in the car seat for the first time? Correct. We had a sense of a text saying something to the effect well, of... I guess I would have guessed the hearsay at this point. What was all this over the phone? Uh, yes, it is through the phone. But this is not hearsay, Judge. This is statements of the defendant offered by a party opponent. Uh, anything by the other party is uh, it's, its effect on here subject to Brandon versus the state. So to put it in context and for the defendant's admissions, uh, it's admissible under Brandon versus the state. I thought he was testifying as to what Leanna said. He was. And the defendant, back and forth between the two of them. Um, well, my same objection. That's the same response, Judge. I know, I know. Okay. So, Detective, um, with the discussion back and forth, um, how, what happened that morning and how did the defendant respond about installing a car seat? Apparently through the text messages, um, Leanna forgot the car seat, the rear view, the rear facing car seat in her car and had left um, that morning with it in the car. Um, she makes a statement like it would be an hour to come back and so 
suggest to the defendant that he put the new car seat in his car. And that's, like I said, on 5-12-2014. And, and we'll get to the actual text messages later, but did he actually, uh, via the text messages, did it corroborate, did he actually install it that day? Yeah, it's apparent that he did install it that day. Was he happy about having to do that? Objection. From his messaging, did he appear upset having to do it that day? Objection. Going from the defendant's statement to your text, Judge. Well, I know, but it's still okay. This, the, the, the inference he draws from that. Uh, you, your Honor, I'll withdraw for now and get to it when we actually tender the text. Okay. So, May uh, 12, 2014, that's about five and a half weeks before June 8th. Correct. Okay. And we talked about June 4th, another conversation. Um, how are you able to ascertain that that was a day that then it was a definite point at which Leanna would have had the forward-facing car seat back in her car, the defendant the rear-facing? Between the interview that I conducted with the defendant and with text messages, that that's the day we were able to go around the round. Okay, let's turn your attention also. We've seen lots of videos from uh, Treehouse and uh, Little Apron and things like that. Were you provided video um, of the Home Depot parking lot going back for the entire month of June, starting June 2nd all the way up through uh, June 18th. I was. Okay, and have you reviewed that just generally to see on specific days where the defendant would park within the parking lot? I have. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, show defense counsel what our mark for identification purposes uh, as state exhibit. I'm just going to ask you to take a look at State's Exhibit 438. Do you recognize that? I do. How do you recognize that? I recognize it as when I was on the back of the union review to where the defendant parked on certain days of the week. And is this a, a, actually, is this a fair and accurate representation of the parking lot? And have you reviewed those speakings in time to determine, basically, to be able to um, state what the video reflects about where he parked on the official day? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I tender State's Exhibit 438. All right, Detective Stoddard, because these stickies are so small too, I'm gonna ask you to get up again, if you don't mind. Well, if you do mind, it's tough. You still gotta step down, so. Thank you. All right, State's Exhibit 438, publishing at this time. Okay. Now, just to kind of show the jury what we're looking at here, so they've got the area. Um, what is depicted here? Okay, this is gonna be the treehouse, 2600 Cumberland Parkway. Okay. Now, is this the entry right here coming from Cumberland where the defendant or anyone, most people if they're coming this way would enter into to park at the treehouse? Correct. Okay. Now, is the parking lot over here and then over here as well going up into this side? Correct. Okay. Where is the only way you can really enter to go to the treehouse uh, in this building? Are you aware if that's an emergency exit or if this is- I the believe main this is an emergency exit and this is just the, the one main entrance right here. Okay. So that's down here at the bottom corner of the Home Depot treehouse, correct? Correct. Okay, now looking at this, let's start by going just through, through some of the parking areas, okay? Um, looking at this June 3rd at 9.13.10, uh, what is reflected there? He parked here front by the entrance. Okay, and has it been color-coded as to what day of the week this is? Yes. So that would be a Tuesday? Correct. Okay, <coughs> now looking at June 4th, 8.50.52, what is denoted here? That would be where he would park in the second row. Okay, so that is the second row. Okay. okay. And June the 11th at 101.54, upon returning from lunch on a different Wednesday, where did he park? Over here. Now, just to show everybody, to show the jury to get them kind of, I guess, uh, honed in on where the parking spot the defendant parked at that on the day of 618. Is that this parking spot right here? That's correct. Move that sticky a little bit so we can actually see the parking spot. 
Is that the parking spot where he parked on the day of the incident? That's correct. Okay. Now, at that parking spot, was there any availability for uh, someone to park behind him? No. Uh, how about in front of him? No. On the day he parked, was there already a car parked to his left as he pulled forward? That's correct. And was there any way for anybody to park to his right, or no. is there something else there? There's a little grassy um, straw median right there. Okay. Is there a tree there and a tree there? Correct. Okay. So nobody could have parked anywhere around him at that point or pulled up after he pulled in? No. Okay. Looking at 6 6 at 9 12 27, uh, that is a Friday. Am I pointing to where he parked that day? That's correct. And would that have been back by the wood line? That's correct. Now, all these other times and dates and things of this nature where he parked in the month of June, are these actual parking spots where he parked? No, or is this the general area? No, we're going to refer to these as right rear. Uh, you can't really see it due to the trees and everything here. So he parked somewhere over here off camera. You can see motion, but you can't really, I, I can't tell exactly where he parked. So basically on those days, he comes over here and parks somewhere in this general area. That's correct. Okay. And is that a straight line walk down from here to the treehouse entrance? It is. Okay. Thank you. You have your seat. Now, Detective, in uh, the course of your investigation, uh, I, were you provided a number of different uh, CDs and flash drives and things like that from the Home Depot that showed a video of the parking lot on the day in question? I did. Okay, were some of those duplicative and things of that nature uh, as far as getting the same video on different, in different versions and things like that? They were. And were there other videos that may not have been on one that were on other things provided? That's correct. Okay. Now I'm going to start by starting with the morning of uh, June 18th. Um, and I'm going to publish to you a video and describe what time it is that we first see the defendant come into the parking lot. And Your Honor, this time I think, uh, as we did the parking video before, we're going to need to move the, the screen up this way. And so. In terms of the defense, do you have your the screen working? Yeah. You're going to play off of You play off of the model pack. Detective, I'm going to publish this only been admitted as State's Exhibit 376, which has video from disc 23. And let me know when we're watching this if you can actually see it or if you need to step down, okay? I'm going to open what is uh, 6 18 14 J Harris 2600 vehicle entry.
if you see right here, 2440, 9 a.m., is that the first time the defendant's car is seen coming into this camera angle? Yes, sir. Okay, and is that the road as it's coming off of Cumberland Boulevard uh, to go around the corner to the parking lot? Yeah, off Cumberland Parkway. Okay. go to the next camera angle that shows uh, the defendant's car. I want to state the exhibit. It's already been admitted. 317. Nine twenty-five thirteen a.m. We see in this camera angle the defendant's car enter for the first time. Yes, sir. Stop there at 925 38. Is that point in time where after he's pulled forward, backed up right there, and then pulled in, uh, is that when his car has come to a stop at 925 38? That's correct. Now, does he immediately get out of his car, or is there some time period before he actually closes the door? There is some time period. Second earlier, I stopped it at 926.17, but a second earlier, about 926.16, was that when the defendant actually shut the door? Yes. Okay, had his car door opened earlier, about 17 minutes after, 17 seconds after Judge, he stopped. I'm, I'm going to object to the form of, of the question. Um, I'll rephrase it. Do you really think they need to hear it? I'm going to start objecting to it. About how long was it from the time uh, he stopped the car to the door opened? 30, how, to open? Yeah, approximately, if you remember. Mm. Less than 30 seconds. Okay. And how long was it when he actually got out of the car? Would it have been more or less than 30 seconds? Less. Or no, around 30 seconds. Okay. And at the time he closed the door, would it have been more or less than 30 seconds? Less. I'm going to start again. And now it's the off screen. We're now going to publish um, the other video, a different angle from the middle.
been an arriving at work. One, two. Start playing an ask from four twenty six. Five seventeen. Uh, what do we see? Enter the picture here on the top left. And is this going to show a different angle? Is it going to park? Yes. Stopping it at 925.38. What is the state of the vehicle there at 925.38? Is that on? It's the same as the video before. Same time. Let me start again. Stop it there. Um, car door starting to open. What time is that? 926 16 in this video, what have you just done? Close the door. Now plug. And just so the record's clear, in what direction is the defendant walking per the parking lot or the parking lot uh, map of the treehouse? Towards the entrance of the treehouse. What time is that where he actually walks out of camera view? 926 50 second. All right, now I'm going to go to a different camera angle. Can the different camera angle pick up him walking further toward the, uh, the building? It does. Here, can you see that figure? Let me hit play and we'll see. I'm starting at 926.48. And who is that? That's going to be the defendant, or appears to be the defendant. What is that he has in his left hand that you see him coming in later through badging in? Mm, Chick fil A cup. And did he tell you about anything he would have to get from his right before he got out and got out of the vehicle that morning? It'd be his computer bag. Okay. And do you see that reflected on his video? That he yeah, actually got his video back, or uh, computer bag. Yeah, there appears to be a computer bag slung over his shoulder. Okay. And at 9.26, 
92703 is he any longer in the video? No, he's on here. <coughs> Finally, we were able to get badge access video as well about what time to, cro to confirm what time you came in that yes, morning. Yes, we did. Badged in the green light. What time is that? Um, 9.27.44. Now, uh, were you providing an addition to badge access records for Little Apron? Were you provided badge access records for the treehouse as well? I was. Okay. And did you go back and look at the videos and compare them to the badge access records, which were, I guess, operating on different servers? I did. Okay. And was this time right on point? They were. Did you confirm the other times when he badged out for lunch, back in from lunch, and out for the day? Correct. The videos to the badge access record. We're all within a second or two. Now, did these videos also uh, depict the defendant departing work for the day? They do. <clears throat> now that I move to on the same video badge out or the same exhibit 317 badge out for the day. Okay. What time is it that he is badged out there? It would be 414.44 p.m. Now I'm going to go back to the front full day video, no, front parking video. <coughs> Move to later in the day. Did you find did you find on this video a video of the defendant walking out to his car we from did. this camera angle? In this video, do you see the defendant walking out to his car? I do. Okay. Now at 4.16.04 p.m., what did he just do at that time? He closed the door. Four sixteen oh seven p.m. What is the car time? The vehicle's moving. Okay. Now going back to State's Exhibit three seventy six. I'm going to publish. State's Exhibit 376. J. J. Harris exit. Um, exit vehicle. Four sixteen twenty seven. What appears on the right? It appears to be the defendant's vehicle. Okay. 
looking at that vehicle and re reviewing the videos up here, his windows are up or down at that point? They stay shut. And he's out of the screen. What time was that? It's going to be at 4.16, 31 p.m. Now, during this investigation, um, <coughs> were you given information and did you uh, find out that the defendant had actually uh, returned to his car at some point during the day? We did. Okay. And it, it, what time did that happen? He returns to the car at 12.41, 42 p.m. that same day, 16, right. 16 p.m. Now, when you interviewed the defendant, um, in that interview, did you ask him about his day and did he start going through a timeline? Yes. Well, what did he tell you about his, was he able to give you lots of details about all his goings on during the day? Lots of details. When you got to the lunch portion, did he tell you about where he went to lunch and things like that? He did. Okay. And where did he tell you he went to lunch? He said he went to Publix. Okay. And when you got to the point after Publix, um, did you notice anything that he did when he started describing uh, what had happened next? There was a big pause. So he's sitting there explaining to me where he was going, went to Publix, and then there's a big pause. And when he starts, does he start doing um or saying things like that? Yes. Okay. All right. What does he start saying? He starts saying um or trying to draw it out a little bit longer. Okay. Can, you, can you see that in the, the video that yes. we just saw the other day? Okay. Um, I just said um. So after uh, you, you ask him that and he there's this pause, he does that, did he ever say anything about going to Home Depot for light bulbs? No. Did he just say he went back to work? That's correct. Okay. Um, additionally, going back, going to Home Depot, not saying that, did he ever tell you where he was dropped off? No. Did he ever say anything about going back to his car? No. Did he ever say anything about going into his car? No. And these were all things that he specifically did, his car, his trips, the same car that he left the child in. That's correct. So when you located this video, um, did you actually review it as well? That's correct. Okay. Was this also provided by Home Depot in the same manner as they provided the other video? It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just going to uh, the uh, Exhibit 317, going to front left video. Time did you say that the car enters the screen? Well, he returns to his parked car at 12 41 42. Okay. So he's starting at 12 41 29. see a car start to enter the scene here at 12.41.37. Yes, sir. And that car coming to a stop, what time is that? Car comes to a stop at 12.41.42 p.m. Now, does he immediately get right out of the car? Or he does not. Okay. Now, the time he, he gets out of the car, what time is that? If you can it see it on the screen. It's going to be at 12.42.02. Okay. okay. Now, what time is that where he has opened the door? 12.42. 14. Okay. And he opened it a little bit earlier than that. Yes. And how many have you watched this video more than a few times? Yes. Okay. How do you describe what he has done at that point? As he comes walking up to the door, 
He opens up the car door. He steps into the frame of the door. He is in the frame. He is in there. He has a clear view. And by a clear view, I mean there's nothing between the defendant and a view of the interior of that car. He now, has now, I was going to say, can you, looking at this video, is there any way you can say exactly what he's looking at or anything like no. that? And never once we're going to say where his eyes were. But I will say there is nothing between him and a view of the inside of that car. Now, um, when you see it from the other side, too, does he stay straight up or does he do anything else? No. When he comes up to the car, it appears he bends down a little bit. And as far as you can see from this uh, video, uh, what did, does he ever go his head inside the car or anything like that? No. Not once we said that he ever put his head to the inside of that car. Now, with, um, did, did anything else go inside the car, basically? Uh, what you found at the scene and what you can see, uh, basically, through this, if you know what you're looking for, uh, and it's been slowed down. It appears he has a plastic bag um, through receipts and through other um, video. Um, we found out it was light bulbs um, in that bag, and he throws it into the car seat next to him. Or, from the video, it, it appears that he throws it into the car. This video, 1242.29, is he out of view? That's correct. And he also is this depicted in the other video, uh, the front middle video? It is. Starting at 12:41, now it's 20. Now stopping at 12:41:35, you see a car entering on the right in this video as well. I do. And is that going to be the same car that we saw in the other video, just coming from a different angle? Apparently so. Twelve forty-two oh eight. Does it appear he's out of the car? It does. Okay, and from looking at the other video as well, could you, did it appear you could tell what seat he was in, front or back, on um, yeah. this occasion? Apparently, he's in the front um, passenger seat. Okay. Stop it at twelve forty-two twelve. The door opening at that point. I don't believe so. I'm gonna have to step. Can you step down. I hope you. I know it's a bad angle for you. we're about to see is that what you would just describe to the jury about um, watching this video and how he went to the car. That's correct. Now, Detective, this is from a different angle. Do we see somebody approaching from his from the right? We do. Okay. As that person passes him, what, if anything, does the defendant do? The defendant pauses. Now, can you tell if it, with any certainty if at all he turns back or not? I can't. To look at him. The, the video is, is what it is. Um, you can't really tell. Okay. All we know is he stops or he pauses. Does it appear a point in, that it, it, it is possible that he has Objection. at least? Objection. Okay. I'll ask. Based upon your review on this and enhancements and things like that, is it possible that he was looking back? Objection. That's already been answered, Judge. I don't think I asked he, that specific he question. He said he couldn't tell. In fact, what he said was the video is what it is. And I think, thank you. You can go ahead. After looking at many, many pictures of this up close, 
it is possible that the defendant is turning his head as that person walks by him. Now here at 12.42.40 p.m., does he bring anything up to his face? Or does he bring his hands up to his face? He brings his hand up to his face. Do you know what's in his hands at that point? I do not. Can you tell if he would have been looking back at that point for sure or not? No. And does he stop in there? He does. Okay. And now since I paused that so many times, let me go back and just let it play in real time. Okay. Yeah, you, you can have your scene back. Out of the screen at 12:42. Excuse me, 12:43. He's walking out of the screen. That's correct. Now, detective, have you reviewed a number of videos of him walking around the parking lot and walking uh, into work and things like that? I have. Uh, does he ever have any appear to have any problem looking at his phone while he's walking? No. Did you ever see him stop and look at his phone in the middle of the parking lot? Not the videos I reviewed. Um, I did not see him stop or walk in. Detective, in addition, um, regarding the timing, um, did, have you looked at any other videos addressing uh, the timing of how long he was in the car, how long it took him to leave, and basically a zoomed-in video of the, the video of the car as he goes back to him at lunch? I have. Okay. And have you reviewed it as far as you having looked at that video several times and looked at it close up? Is that a fair and accurate representation? Would it help assist the jury uh, as well in, in viewing the video in a closer-up angle? I would say yes. I'm going to show you what I mark for identification purposes as State's Exhibit 
scattered out to somebody else too. Right. No kind of way. Joe Key didn't uh, take the videos at Home Depot either. He just said it was a fair and accurate representation of the videos he saw at this closer up. So I think he laid the foundation properly uh, for being able to testify about it. What's the difference is the distance of manipulators. If we can look at one to see if it's a company that's been manipulated. I'm allowed to ask a question. Thank you. Is this a good time to close? Yes, yeah, Judge, we can publish it afterwards. Oh, great. Oh, okay. How long is it? Um, there are three videos. They're both a couple minutes at most. A couple minutes and two? A couple minutes no, it, it would be like legit two. Not legit. like a couple minutes and... <laughs> legit two. Legit two. <laughs> and that's a legal term. We'll go with legit two. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, then we'll let you. Okay. Well, proper decor.
quarterback Lynch. Ladies and gentlemen, close my pads a little bit in your gray room, keep them at the mind. Don't discuss the matter with each other. Just take time to enjoy yourselves and have a good lunch. Call that to the jury, please. Please watch your stuff going down. Thursday. Thank you, Judge. 